Good morning to you. It's great to see you here. Good morning to you. You're someone we can cheer. Hooray! Good morning to you. Sing it clear and loud. Good morning to you. You really make us proud. Welcome to episode four of Space to Create. We hope you're continuing to do well and safe at home. This week, Yair and I will be joined by guest artists Bex and Riz. They will be bringing you fun and lots of lively activities and some lovely relaxation at the end as well. We hope that you really enjoy them and as ever, we'd love to hear from you at the email address at the end of the video. You could share your work with us or even a clip telling us how you're feeling. We hope you enjoy yourselves. Hi there, my name is Rebecca and I'm in my attic, which I've made into a sort of temporary studio while I can't get to the studio right now because we're all in lockdown so um, what I'm trying to do today is to do a picture um, inspired by an artist that I've recently discovered called Jean Tingley that is a super name and he did lots of sculptor sculptures and um, paintings and moving mechanical sculptures some of them spouted water and um, he looked a bit like Willy Wonka, I think. He looked like he had a sense of humour. So if you look at the sheet that I should have come through with this video, you'll see a picture of him and a picture of some of his work, um, including some of his paintings. Uh, so what are you going to need for this video, for this activity? I think you're going to need some pens or chalks or anything that makes a mark. Uh, felt tip pens are good or... Um, crayons and something to draw on. I, I'm going to use the top of a pizza box lid because I quite like the brown background and I noticed one of his paintings he had he used cardboard so uh, we're going to try and do some of that. If you'd like to get your materials together then um, we'll make a start. Okay so I've got my card here and I've got a selection of felt tip pens of different colours and I've also got some chalks excuse my arm reaching across there so I'm going to start by making some big circle shapes splodgy, not perfect circles some splodgy circle shapes which I'm going to use the chalks, I think, to smudge around a bit. So I thought it would be fun to try and invent our own mechanical marvellous machine inspired by Tongalu. And I'm going to use lots of splodgy shapes because they're going to be like the wheels or the cogs <clears throat> of our machine. And we can add to that later lots of nice spikes and bicycle wheel shapes to make it really look like a machine but what you could do now is just add lots of nice circles have a think about what sort of machine you would invent and what would it do I think I need a machine I'm gonna add a bit of a spiral there I think I need a machine that brings me cups of tea on a regular basis so I think my machine may do that. You can fill the whole page and you could also use paint. Paint would be nice and splodgy. I think I'm just going to add some spikes to be like a bicycle wheel and I might need some prongs here. I might need some cogs to get my machine moving. I think I'm definitely going to need a conveyor belt that has my cups of tea all in a row being brought to me. 
and I think we're going to need some spikes over here and some more bicycle, I don't know, maybe a big cog here. They're quite tricky to do actually, I've got to concentrate to do those. I think we need more colour. more spirals so you can what kind of machine would you like would it bring you chocolate bars in bed would it I've got a bit of some black chalk here um, maybe it would tidy up your room for you But it doesn't really matter because it's your machine and it can do whatever you want. As long as it makes sense to you, that's all that matters. That kind of makes sense to me. You could also do this on... <clears throat> you could do this on all different coloured types of card. You could, what other colours have we got? We need some green in there. You could do it on, I did one version on the back of a pizza box. And that looks quite good because the um, chalks really pop out the colours. I'll show it to you in a minute. I think I'm nearly done. Let me have, show you what it looks like when you do it on on card, brown card. I've also added some mechanical hands here. So maybe the mechanical hands are holding a paintbrush. Maybe it invents new paintings. Maybe that's what this machine does. I add some more spikes over here. I like these. Uh, prongs but if you have a go please do send us um, your pictures and we'd love to have a look at them and uh, see if you can invent your own mechanical machine colorful mechanical machine inv inspired by Jean Tongli we'd love to see what things you come up with but for now I think you need to have a go Hi, so we're back in the attic and we're going to try and make a John Birmingham style collage. I'll show you how to make it um, using scissors, Pritt stick, coloured paper and what else was there? A black felt tip pen would be really handy. And the thing we're, what we're trying to do is to create a picture of a sleeping animal. So it could be any animal. It could even um, be an imaginary animal. So. Let's have a go at making a picture just like John Birmingham. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to get my create my background. And that's going to be my a blue background, and I've ripped along another bit of card to make a green foreground. Now, the next thing I want to do is get a piece of white paper and just draw a sleepy animal. I think I'm going to draw oh, a sleeping goose, just like John Birmingham did. He liked geese, actually. I think he did a few books about ducks and geese. There's his, there's his beak. Uh, I think he needs a warm, scarf too. So, a few feathers. And I think what we need to do is give them a little bit of colour here and there. Nice orange flat feet. And what colour should his scarf be? Maybe just some um, 
Maybe he has a checked scarf. Oops. So the next thing I need to do is cut our sleeping duck out. You can do any animal you like. You can do your one of your own pets. You could make it an underwater scene and have fish floating. It um, anything that you it could be the baby from the Hushabye book. You could draw a sleeping baby or the man on the moon. Well, this is a tricky bit. This bit. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, you can let your imagination go wild. You could add some stars or you could add the moon, the sun. Let's get some Pritt stick. And just put a bit of glue on there. And there he is. He's, he's sleeping. Maybe, maybe we do need the moon. But I'm not going to use scissors for this. I think I'm just going to rip this a bit like John Burningham he did lots of ripping I try and it's hard it's quite hard to make a moon shape though just ripping do you think I've done it does that say moon to you should it be over there I think it should be over here and maybe add some stars later but there's my sleeping goose you can have a go at doing some other animals i had a go at doing some some sleepy sheep and that's got a red sky and black clouds and i've ripped i've ripped the um sun here in the clouds without using scissors and this this fish doesn't look very sleepy, but he uh, he looks wide awake in fact But it just goes to show that you can make quite bold fun pictures by not using very many um, Details in fact sometimes it's quite nice to just do something really bold. So there we go Have a go at doing your John Burningham style Collage Hello, we're back in the attic and we're going to do a magic make. Now, sometimes in the video um, that we send out, this will be a drawing tip. But for this one, I'm going to do um, a musical instrument that you can make from a piece of printer paper. So I need a piece of printer paper. I've got some old scraps here. You can see I've been folding this one, trying to work out how to make this paper whistle. Let me show you first of all what it does. So, there's my paper whistle. It makes a really loud and annoying noise, but it's very fun to do. And I think it would be really fun to decorate this and make it into something. You can make one for everyone, every member of your family. So first of all, you're going to need to chop the top bit of your printer paper off so I'd say it's about two inches by seven inches there will be a template um, sent to you so you can be, print that out or we'll have a look at it online and it will show you exactly what shape you need to make and how to do it but I'm going to show you here so first of all we're going to fold it in half so you've got a v-shape and then I fold it again into the center the two ends into the center like that we'll fold it back on itself so we have this shape a zigzag so you've got a valley a mountain and a valley and then with some scissors you could just pinch up you don't need scissors you could just rip a hole you need to 
make a hole. And then I've found that if you trim off these long ends like that, it's better. So let's give it a go. That's oh, that's quite loud. You can also just trim. You could just make it smaller. Trim off those ends, so it's it's like that. Oh, so have a go, and um, that's loads of fun. Well, that's our handy tip for this week: a magic make. Hi there, my awesome artist for this week is a writer and illustrator called John Burningham and I'm going to show you one of his books, I've got one of his books here and this is all about going off to sleep at night and um, he does some lovely lovely pictures. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures, I know this might, this book might seem a bit young for you but this gives you a sense of the lovely pictures and the lovely use of colour that he uses and it also is fairly simple for you to have a go yourself. He uses lots of colourful backgrounds. These are two, three sleepy bears going off to bed but he also uses uh, ripped paper. So in this picture he's made a sort of collage of ripped paper for the seaweed and he's drawn on a piece of white just white printer paper probably and some colored card for the background you could have a go at doing a picture like that here's the man on the moon he's feeling sleepy i don't know if any of you are playing a lot of games at the moment on your devices um which is totally understandable because there's not a lot else to do when you're stuck indoors all the time but I would recommend just for the last part of the day even if you can switch off and have a read of something it will help to calm you and calm your brain maybe just have a look at the pictures you don't even have to read it's just nice to rest your let your eyes rest on something else I know that I find it very relaxing looking at pictures and looking at how they've made the illustrations and what colours they've used but yeah have a go have a read have a read tonight hi how is everybody feeling today is possibly week seven, maybe it's week eight, I've forgotten. In fact, I don't even remember what day it is half the time. Every day seems to roll into the next. So we're gonna do a few exercises just to kind of release tension in our neck, in our lower back, in our hamstrings. And we're gonna start with some neck rolls. So you can sit cross-legged or you can sit on your knees with your bottom touching your feet, whichever is comfortable for you. So I'm going to sit cross-legged. So our first exercise is going to be neck rolls. So we're going to roll our neck. Let's go anti-clockwise. <laughs> had to think about that. And we're just going to roll right around. That's it. Oh, I've just felt my neck crack then. One more. Oh, that feels good. Releases all that tension in your neck, especially when you're sitting at a desk all day. And then we're going to roll the opposite way. Releasing all that tension in our necks. It's good. Great. And the next one, we're going to do raise our shoulders to our ears and that's a really good one as well for our neck and the tops of our shoulders so we're just going to be like 
scrunching our shoulders up to our ears and release and again up to our ears and release one more up to our ears and release okay so we're going to do uh, the next exercise is called butterfly which is really good for our inner thighs our hip flexors and what we're going to do is create a diamond shape by placing our two soles of our feet together so it kind of creates it does look a bit like a butterfly and then we're going to put our elbows rest our elbows on our knees and then we're going to use our hands to hold on to our ankles and then we're going to start moving forward now go to wherever you think you can go don't go too far if it becomes painful back off some of you may be super flexible and can touch your feet with your nose this is such a great stretch also for our lower back so that's also really good when we're sitting at our desk all day and it's a good way to release the tension. So we're going to reach, you can take a deep breath in and if you release the breath you can maybe move a bit more towards your feet. There we go and back up, fantastic. And our last exercise today is going to be forward fold. So you're going to take your legs out from underneath you, put them right out in front so your feet are facing upwards, like so. And then we're going to bring our hands up. And then we're going to stretch all the way down to our toes. And try and grab the tops of your toes with your hands. So, and then just inch forward and it's such a good stretch for your hamstrings which is the muscle that runs from the, the kind of bottom of your bottom all the way down your whole leg so that's part of that muscle group that's really really helps you with your movement in your legs so again don't go too far if it's painful just come back you can have your hands on here and you can just go here whatever feels comfortable for you. So we're just gonna stretch again, hold out, breathe in, and as you exhale, you may be able to go a little deeper. There we go. And back up. So, I hope those exercises will help, especially if you've had a long day sitting at your desk, or maybe playing your computer games, or watching TV. So you can even do this while you're watching TV, so I hope you enjoy it. Till the next time, take care. I will be here every week with your ear and we'll be joined by different guest artists. If you've had a good time and enjoyed making something, do share photos or even a video with Catherine at Culture Shift. Check out this email address at the end of the video.